So one of the final steps of our sketchbook cover is gonna be to go over our transferred words with either acrylic paint or some type of pen. But now everybody may have different supplies at home, so I wanted to show you how to test the material that you think you may wanna work with to see if it's going to um, work well for this assignment. We are gonna be putting a protective top coat on top of it with our Mod Podge. So we're gonna paint just a clear layer of Mod Podge, and that's gonna sort of help protect your sketchbook cover from getting scraped or scratched or have something else mark off on it and end up damaging that front cover. But we need to make sure that we choose a material that will not smear when we add this layer of Mod Podge. So before you start, I'm gonna show you how to run a quick test. So I've just taken a sticky note and I painted the little section of the blue acrylic paint. And the type that I had is a matte, but create a little test section with whatever paint you've used, whether it be glossy or matte, just on some scrap paper. And now I've got a collection of pens that I'm gonna try out to show you. The first one I have is one of the Pilot Rolling Ball Precise V5 pens. I love writing with these, and these are great for small details. And I wanna see if that mark will smear with Mod Podge. And I'm gonna leave all of these in order, that way I can keep track with which mark is which. Um, next, I'm gonna try a Sharpie and an Ultra Fine Point. Posca paint pens. Some of you may have those. I'm gonna try a Sharpie in metallic gold. I also have um, a Uniball white pigment ink pen. I have no idea if this will work or not, so this is a good experiment to see. And then the next one I'm gonna try is an Arteza um, brand pen, and it's just an ultra fine point, kind of like a Sharpie, but I don't think this one is considered waterproof like a Sharpie, which is why I wanna show it to you. So I don't think that this one is gonna work. And then last but not least, I'm just gonna use a regular, this is just a Papermate ballpoint pen. And then just to try another one, just to see if these are, if all ballpoint pens are the same or if they're a little bit different, I'm gonna try a Bic, um, just a cheap click pen. As soon as this dries, you can take a paintbrush and I'm gonna test out my Mod Podge. But now I'm gonna see if those pins, what they do and how they interact with that top layer of Mod Podge. That is a great way to test before you start painting um, or drawing the fonts on your sketchbook is to just do a really quick test and see if it's gonna smear or blend. I have had students before that did not test that out and they didn't know if they were using a permanent marker or permanent pen and it unfortunately smeared the whole cover of their sketchbook. So I certainly don't want that to happen to any of you guys. So we will try out a little tester sample first. If you were gonna choose to work with a Sharpie or a pen like that, just like normal, you were going to outline and fill things in. I like to keep my words, my original drawing, or you can have your the original font pulled up on a screen right beside you, just to make sure that you're matching the font as well as you can with like the thickness and the details.
Now the next thing that you can do is if you want to work with your acrylic paints, if you have a small brush, you can use that to paint it in. I think I'll do this font up here in white to make it stand out really well. And since I'm left-handed, um, I'm gonna smear if I work in this direction, so I'm gonna work from the right side back to the left. Now, once you have the cover of your sketchbook, it's finished, you've added everything that you want, you've got your quote on there, um, you feel like everything has enough coats of paint and you're really happy with it, you are ready to complete your protective clear top coat. So we're gonna go back to our Mod Podge. So with just a clean, damp brush, make sure there's no paint or anything in it. And you should have already pre-tested if you used any type of pen to make sure that it won't bleed. And just very carefully, I'm gonna start with a clear coat. It doesn't need to be super thick. Just kind of smooth everything out. You don't want big, thick ridge lines or anything in it. And you don't wanna get this on your fabric, just on the painted surface. As soon as you're finished, you can check it for any missed spots to see if one part is not as glossy and shiny as the rest. I try to just smooth everything out where I don't have thick clumps of any, of any Mod Podge. Then you can let this dry. And if you feel like you want a second coat to make this a thicker layer, you can. But that right there now makes my sketchbook complete. So this, once as soon as this dries, it is ready to start working in. Now that I've got my background painted with the ombre, um, I think just because I worked with the tape so much and so many layers, I've sort of been left with some uneven, not perfectly crisp edges, which is really going to bother me. So I wanted to show you there are always all sorts of interesting ways that you can problem solve and fix things. Now I could choose to simply tape, retape, and paint a white or a colored border um, going around if I wanted to. That's one option. But I wanted to show you a different way that I'm going to problem solve this. And that is, I happen to have some very thin white ribbon, which I think will look nice because it'll match some of the white in the background and make it pop. 
And then I'm just gonna take a tiny little paintbrush and um, some tacky glue and glue ribbon around as a border. And that's gonna cover up any of those not very pretty edges and hopefully leave me with a really nice pretty result. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So I've got my tacky glue out right there and kind of visualizing how wide that is gonna be, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue Now, before that dries, I'm not gonna start right at the end because I need to figure out exactly how I'm gonna end it so I have a pretty edge. I'm gonna leave a little bit left over. I'm gonna lay that in the glue and give it a good little press. And this extra bit, I'm gonna figure out how I wanna cut that down later. I'm gonna go around and then try to make a really pretty little end. So now I can come up along the other side. And to get this ribbon to work as one continuous line, I'm going to take it and instead of just turning it, I'm gonna flip it and make a pretty little corner, I think. And then lay it down right in that line of glue. Like that. It gives me a pretty like a little edge that's folded right there. And then I can continue around. Now that I get down here to the end, I've got those two loose pieces that I need to figure out how to make them fit together nicely so that way they look like um, the other corners. And there's a way to do it and I always forget how, so I have to always stop and rethink how I'm gonna do this. Let's see. Yes, okay. I'm gonna grab a pair of tweezers to help me do this. Um, so this one, I'm gonna cut at an angle, at a 45 degree angle right across there. Kinda doing that while that glue's still wet so I can smush all that in place. And then this lower one, I've cut it off where it's a little bit shorter um, it's not it's got a little bit of extra left on it and I'm gonna take that and flip it under okay yeah that's what I need to do I'm gonna lift that one up temporarily And I'm gonna get that one glued down. Okay, so I've got this one glued down where it flips under, and then I'm gonna tuck that one into, I think I've got just a little bit extra. I'm gonna tuck that one, this last one down into that creased fold. So I'm just gonna wiggle a little bit of glue inside of there, put a little bit of glue underneath it, 
and then use my tweezers to sort of poke that into place. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on top, up underneath, to get that top little piece of ribbon to lay down flat. That takes a lot of a lot of trial and error to get that exactly right, but I think that that will work. And so now, when I had that not so pretty edge, I could paint a border, but I can also use the solution of making a little folded ribbon border as well. And then that cleans up the edges and makes the presentation of my book much prettier. And so now that this is dry, I'm ready to begin working on adding my font.